Before I move on to talk about Bretton Woods in, 18, in 1945, I want to talk a little bit more about why do we need and want price stability. This topic is going to continue repeating throughout this entire episode. And this is something that is very important in general to keep in mind when talking about what central banks are doing and why they do what they do. Because the mandate for all central banks around the world is to maintain price stability. And this is why. Two general big reasons. One is to avoid long-term inflation or deflation. So with price stability, you don't have crazy volatility in prices. So that's, that's good. We're going to explain that later. The second is that it contributes to economic activity and employment, which is very important because as a central bank, you're not, or as a government in general, it's not just about ensuring that people have jobs or people have food or there's low crimes, but it's to ensure that you grow the economy and people always have jobs. It's very important. So how does this, how does price stability affect all of this? Let's think from a perspective of a business, a business with investment or a household with investment. We're less focused on investment. When we have price, when we have price stability, it allows for transparency in price mechanism. That means you know that in general, prices will roughly be like that. It could be 2% different from this year and to next year, 2%, but you know the rough confidence level where prices will change. It's not like this year is going to be $1 and next year is going to be $3,000 because we're not talking about hyperinflation. So because of this price stability, because we have some idea of what prices will roughly be like the expected price level of next year, we can make better decisions financially to invest and allocate them to different resources. The other thing with price stability is that it reduces inflation risk premium. So what does that mean? It means that the real interest rates is now lower and as an investor you can borrow money at a cheaper rate because the real interest rate is lower this is very good for investment because then once again people will, will take will use money to invest it in the various resources and the various areas that require investment to grow the gdp and lastly it's talking about more about financial stability because when investors are making decisions two things they think about one is, do I, do I invest it now? And where do I invest it? You know, do I invest it in this current period? So do I, do I invest it in, in the S&P or specific companies? And how do you allocate the resource? Or do I invest it in my company and then I can hire more people? Or I invest it in other people's company, they decide how they want to use the money. Or the other thing is where I look at the economy and say, you know what, I think inflation is going to happen and I don't, I really want to, hedge against inflation because inflation means the power of my money has gone down and I don't want that. I want to buy more things with my money. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going, I'm going to put my money in somewhere safer as a hedge against inflation. There are a lot of papers talking about this. I can link them to you if you're interested, but basically it's a hedge against inflation. One of the best things or one of the best resources is gold. To an investor, I have hundred dollars instead of putting it into the S and P. I decide that I want to hedge against inflation, so I'm going to put my money into gold so that I can use it in the future when the economy is a bit more stable and the prices of gold increase and then my, the value of my $100 has increased. So I'm ba basically making a decision to spend it now or spend it in the future by hedging. So what does this mean? For the investor, it, it's the same. You know, I have $100, it's not in my bank, it's either in the market or in, the, or in gold or in some other assets working for me. Okay, that's fine. But what about the economy? What about central banks? Because this is a mandate by the central bank. So how does this affect the central bank? The central bank now looks at this hundred dollars and he, the, central, the central bank looks at it in the way where, okay, if, if this person puts into the economy right now, this hundred dollars will generate returns. This hundred dollars will either help, the, help a firm to be more productive, increase in GDP, to hire more people, increase in GDP, or to contribute in one way or another, increasing GDP. Whereas if this person puts the same $100 into something like gold or a different asset, it's not working for the economy. It's just being dormant, staying somewhere, and not adding to the GDP, adding to the bottom line. This is why it's very important to have price level stability from a government point of view, because it encourages productivity, it encourages economic growth, it encourages investment, it encourages GDP growth. And that's why we want price stability. Of course, we are also not saying that we need like 
10% increase every year so that it entices people to spend more, we're just targeting a 2%. Fun fact, this 2% was mentioned kind of like casually by John Maynard Keynes before the Bretton Woods or during the Bretton Woods agreement. And we just stuck through with it. So that's fine. 